Hey everyone, my name is Evgeny Shvarov. I'm an intersystems startup and devrel manager. And today uh, I wanted to talk with you how to set up a uh, development environment uh, with intersystems Iris if you want to use embedded Python to build your application with Iris. Uh, this will be a hands-on with me talking aside. So let's go. Oh, okay. Uh, so we are developing uh, InterSystem Saris application uh, with embedded Python. So literally, yeah, uh, uh, some time ago, InterSystems uh, introduced the support of uh, embedded Python into InterSystem Saris. So that means that uh, developers now can uh, uh, create applications with the InterSystem Saris uh, written like 100% in Python. Uh, but often we need like to set up an, an environment, uh, so literally how to start. Uh, there are different options, but today we will talk uh, about the boilerplate, a template that uh, we introduced in uh, InterSystems Open Exchange. So we can open open exchange and then here we can look for okay so actually we can look for um, templates yes and here we have uh, iris embedded python template just on top um, okay and uh, so yeah let's use it and uh, like, but let's pretend I'm developing some hello world application using this template. Uh, yes, this is a GitHub template, so I can click use this template and create a new repository uh, in my personal uh, GitHub account. It will be Iris Python. Hello. World. Okay, it will be like a private repository. Uh, so GitHub creates a copy of this template with a new name, and um, so I'm gonna open it in uh, Visual Studio Code. So here is my Visual Studio code. So I open new window. I say clone repository. I put it in uh, some folder on my laptop. Open it. And uh, this is a uh, Docker enabled application. So I will, I have Docker installed. And uh, so what can I do? I can just start uh, building a Docker image out of it. So this Docker image and the Docker setup will be our development environment that will include the system Iris and Python and a few examples. So let's see what do we have here. Uh, so if we check Docker file, so we can see that uh, uh, it will take a community build of InterSystems Iris. Uh, then it sets like a work deal just to uh, the work deal inside Docker. And then it sets up a few environment and, uh, and just variables. And then it uh, runs Build, builds the container where we copy with this command we copy all from everything from uh, this uh, folder to uh, docker image then we install all the uh, modules from requirement txt this is what we have here then we start iris itself and uh, 
And there are two commands, merge and isle script, which actually do the whole setup. And when we speak about, uh, when we talk about setting up an environment, uh, we often think about two large tasks, I would say. So first is could be, okay, I need to make some settings to in the systems iris uh, that are different from default. For example, I want to create a database, namespace, I need to turn on a few, several services or create users, things like that. And for the activities like that, we uh, there is a uh, approach, there is a special command merge and there is a, uh, that helps you to deploy these all these settings like uh, like, like expected settings like database, namespace, mapping, user services, whatever you want, to uh, like in this intersystems iris instance, instance which are, will be our development environment. So and we, we literally see this line iris merge uh, merge CPF. So let's see what is inside this merge CPF file. Okay, here we see actions. And actions uh, in this file include uh, creation resources. Resources helps us to maintain security uh, questions, security uh, features for different like assets in uh, Iris. Uh, so, for example, database is an, is an asset. So we create a resource which is a name which has the same name of this database. And um, so we create database, iris app data data in this folder inside inside container. Then we create another resource and, and related database uh, that is for the code. Uh, and next we uh, create a namespace to have access to this database uh, that says, okay, I have uh, I will have. Uh, uh, the data in iris data database and code in iris code database uh, that interoperability is enabled in this namespace what else here so we also start uh, call in uh, service which actually is a mandatory if uh, this this call uh, so we actually create this database just as an example that you can in your, your development environment often you want to start from a like clear uh, database from scratch and this is the way you can do that uh, but to make uh, embedded python work we need to uh, to enable service uh, call in service and this is what is uh, going on here so we enable and uh, we put authentication 84 48 that will let us uh, to sign in to this uh, call-in service using um, our operational system users so that basically the user that I signed in here so it will be allowed to this uh, to this instance of docker image and um, and then I modify a user. Uh, there's several uh, embedded users uh, that, like, not embedded, but users that come with the system. Let's super user is one of them, and uh, this leads to this is a hello and low and password hash that can be created uh, with a special combination. Actually, it is listed in a readme, so we can. Yeah, it's LMD, LMD, so I think it should be the way to... Oh, yes, open preview. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, if you are curious about this password, this is uh, a special command docking run that, uh, that you can just run in the terminal. Or, or just system terminal just have it more comfortable 
boom yes and you can create a hash uh, for any password uh, in this case this is a hash of uh, like sys password i believe okay so we, s we saw this merge cpf and um, Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, there are a lot of a lot of uh, different actions or settings you can you can you will be able to do with merge CPF, but all they're related to the system and its configuration, right? So uh, in the description of this video, there will be a link uh, that goes to uh, documentation part. Uh, related to merge CPF, but you will also search for that merge uh, CPF into systems. Yes. So here is how. Here you can find all the all all different configuration types you can manage via merge CPF. Great, and then, uh, then, uh, what else? What other settings could be? Other settings uh, is something that, like, voluntary changes. For example, you want to um, run some code to to maybe import some data to perform some logic, uh, whatever activities, and for that. Uh, if we we'll go look to the docker file we see uh, line 25 line 20, uh, 25th line where we call iris script py uh, we are iris python iris python is exactly embedded python of inter systems uh, and this is an example of how you can just set up uh, your own development environment let's see what we do here so here we have examples how to switch namespace and then for example do, perform some security settings then uh, we are switching namespace again uh, here we uh, run the command a uh, lot uh, ipm module and uh, this is a this is very important because uh, you know there is a Intersystems Package Manager um, framework, which allows you to package your solutions in an IPM package, and this allows you to uh, develop in a way that is that what you develop is already packaged, and uh, you like in your development environment you deal with the package as it is already like installed and at your like, customer client machine. So with this common form. Uh, so that you are sure then when you publish on some registry that people will be uh, will it will install it uh, from registry that the behavior will be just the same as you have when you develop it's very handy thing so that's why we here we uh, load all the code all our like publication code with this command and then there is an example how you can, for example, import any CSV data. So we have here a CSV file and we can put any files and all of them will be in this Python cycle be imported to, uh, to into Iris using uh, create engine function, which uh, we import from SQL Alchemy uh, lib. Uh, Yes, and uh, I forgot to mention that this IPM call, IPM function goes from Iris module. Okay, and basically maybe this is it. So let's uh, see if... Uh, so we uh, started building this package, but we see that it says that port is already in use. Okay, let's just switch to another port. Uh, let's switch here to 39. Uh, so I'm saving it. Uh, let's uh, rebuild it again. 
Okay, uh, now it works and uh, let's see what do we have here. Uh, so as I said, there, there is a iris py file that if we check it imports uh, embedded Python uh, lib and that lets to have calls to object script uh, methods in, uh, in iris it like shows the iris version it can it shows how to create a record in dc python persistent class which actually we also import here via the source code and uh, then uh, we uh, yes we will create record we run we run sql query from this uh, uh, class persistent class and and then show it and showing it and then we uh, uh, show the data from a global uh, so with, uh, so with, with this simple example we can deal with uh, persistent classes its records and with uh, data in, in global arrays perfect let's see if this for all works uh, so according to readme uh, we can we need to run this iris py we need to open shell in docker right and it will open in this folder and then call iris python and this file copy relative pass dot slash boom yeah okay have hello world the printout of the recorded of created record yes and also there is an, uh, another approach when we have this sample py with a few functions here and uh, that we will use it from object script right from this test cls file here we uh, import sample with so what how we can do that now we, we open terminal in iris so we uh, click here to copy invocation oh but let's start from hello world right yes so it, it, it imports uh, sample py and calls this function sample hello function that returns world <laughs> yes and uh, let's use some more sophisticated logic here okay amazing uh, what else is important okay so I mentioned this module XML let's see how uh, it describes this module so here we say that all the classes are in so we import all the classes from this DC Python folder because of this package like a package of classes and persistence then we say okay we need to uh, file copy all the files from python lib to the destination of lib0 python so it will be in a target machine and also we move all the data to uh, the folder with the package name so the package is like here iris python template so and indeed if we check uh, docker uh, this is a test iris hello world yes so we can open files we see where is iris here the elements in user user iris sys. let's see so we go to uh, Let's see if, if we have this file of Python to the libdir and then Python. So let's see in libdir, libdir. Yes, Python, we have this 
flask and uh, and ah we have this iris app and sample you see great and we also have this data uh, which inside package name i spike and template and this the titanic csv uh, so in the similar way the python application Iris will be deployed uh, to any machine you want to deploy it like any of your customers and speaking of the classes yes we also have it here so if you go to classes um, so you have you have this python package with classes that we had in the source code so this is it this is it was indeed a very simple application and with this i wish you i encourage you to go to the link uh, in this video that will uh, lead uh, that will lead to the source code of this application ask you and i encourage you to ask questions on the developer community to this video and happy coding with intersystems iris and python bye